Pardis Di is not a place you Fatui can just show up and do as you please. I believe we've already made ourselves quite clear. Our superior gave us permission to search for and collect medicinal herbs in Pardius Di for research purposes. But you've been in Sumeru for some time already. I find it coincidental that you chose to only come here today. Even the Grand Sage himself may not have the right to question our research, much less an ordinary scholar like yourself. I've done my duty to inform you. Don't make things difficult for yourself. It would seem that my words have fallen on deaf ears. You can keep trying to deny it, but coming to Parties DI now? I'm pretty sure you're not just looking for herbs. With all due respect, your baseless speculations will only lead to unnecessary trouble. Well, you only have your Harbinger to blame. He knows nothing about keeping a low profile. I may be staying at Parties DI as a scholar, but that doesn't mean I'm no longer a forest watcher. It is still my duty to protect the peace and safety of the scholars who have contributed so much to Sumeru. Then it seems our conversation has hit an impasse. No one will lay a hand on you, Hapasia. Not on my watch! Tiny! Are you alright? I'm fine. These Fatui have really crossed the line. Time to teach them a lesson. Give us Hapasia! Keep dreaming! Yes, yeah, Hayari! Beat us up! The doctor's orders are absolute! Yeah? You've been someone's lap dog for so long that you don't know anything else now! Getting anywhere. Traveler, Paimon, please go to Hapasia. We need to make sure they don't try to sneak around and attack from behind. Got it! <sighs> Hapasia's still here. Doesn't look like anyone's broken in. So, you think this is over? What? The Balladeer is here? <laughs> I've missed that look of abject horror. You've given me that look every time we meet. I can hear all of your thoughts, you know. Don't you remember? I already saw you the first time you came to Parties Di and made contact with Hapasia. I didn't need to do anything. It is her honor to be able to connect her consciousness with me. Uh, who are you talking to? It can't be the Balladeer, right? <laughs> That's impossible! I know you must be curious. I might as well tell you that I decided to enter Hapasia's consciousness the moment I sensed your touch. I wanted to observe you on a fool's errand. Uh, hey! Traveler! What are you doing? My deification is nearly complete. All that's left now are just some final details. Do you understand? Even if you manage to rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali, it will be impossible for you to defeat a bona fide god like me. Is it wise to force that childlike god into a divine battle against me?
Scholars consider the God of wisdom to be the sum total of their faith. It's how they can justify reverence for God as they construct it. But this also shows that humanity's worship of gods is a combination of blasphemy and exaltation. It's truly laughable. Yes, what is it? Yeah, I'm in a good mood, which is why I'm talking to you like this. What do you mean? <laughs> Those words almost make you sound like a friend who actually cares. But you're wrong. I'm different from all of you. I was born to become a god. My entire life up until this point has just been a meaningless routine. Just think about a sheet of paper. By itself, it holds no meaning. The content recorded on it is what gives it value. All I had recorded down before were some painful memories and boring human feelings. Such senseless drivel should have been erased a long time ago. Indeed, to me, the sight of you fools in your futile struggles is far more amusing. Tell me, just what has this world done for you to protect it with such zest and conviction? I'm connected to your consciousness, so I can hear what you're thinking and sense the depth of your determination. This is a good conversation we're having. So here's a word of advice. Let go of your misguided guardian complex. You know nothing about the truth. It'll be for your own good, as well as everyone else's. Humans are a species that can only find bliss in ignorance. Ah, you've seen my affection for her. If you were in my position, I think you'd feel the same way. She peered into my consciousness and saw my past. Someone like that is qualified to become my first follower. All gods need followers. So Hapasia has been chosen. Her appearance heralds my imminent arrival at the throne of divinity, while her worship shall become my glory. You're doubting me again? No matter. Soon, you'll know what kind of authority you're challenging. Who wants to hurt my devout follower? The doctor wants to hurt my first follower? <laughs> How very amusing. Has anyone ever told you that you're not good at sowing discord? The doctor has never known his place. Even now, the puny human thinks himself capable of interfering in the business of the new god. You're still too naive if you think a few words will be enough to convince me to destroy the doctor. But I'm willing to give you a gift, just like my expression of affection towards Hapasia. It is an honor for you to be able to stand here and speak with me. As my listener, you will be rewarded. Both good things and bad things can be called gifts. After all, gods have never needed to be reasonable. Ah! I'm on your thunder! That person Paimon couldn't see was the Belladeer? Oh, he sure chatted with you for a while.
anyone outside is in danger! Let's go! Tainari and Dia still must be fighting! Oh! Have the Fatui retreated? Hey! What happened to you? He's hurt. I'm fine. <sighs> Don't move. I've seen Aramites get struck by lightning before. You need to rest. Struck by lightning? We were fighting, and just as things started looking grim, the weather suddenly became extremely strange. Lightning started attacking everyone, almost as if it were alive. Luckily, there were only two of us, and both of us were nimble enough to dodge most of the strikes. There were a lot of Fatui, though, and they were being torn to shreds by the bolts of lightning. With that, all the Fatui soldiers were forced to retreat. It's all right. My wound aside, you look like you've seen something unpleasant. Is Hapasia all right? Oh. Hey, didn't I tell you not to move? Just in case. Let's go to Hapasia's place and talk about things there. She's fine. Hey, how about taking care of yourself first? I understand my condition. Ugh. The wound is not fatal. I'll be all right. Ugh. The more you understand medicine, the worse of a patient you become. I know. They always think they can push through the pain. Ugh. Oh, he sat down. Let me rest for a bit. Sorry, Traveler. Now you may start. So that's what you were talking to the Balladeer about? Oh, Paimon can't believe what he's thinking. <sighs> the Academia's... God creation plan. <sighs> How ridiculous. That sounds... uh... ambitious, I guess? Anyway, this is all way beyond me. As long as I can enjoy every day with a drink in my hand, tasty food in my stomach, and a good night's rest, that's enough. I'll only work when I have to. <laughs> I must be the least ambitious person who's ever set foot in Party's DI. Don't say that. I haven't even thanked you for your help back there. Don't mention it. Well, if nothing else, all this proves that the doctor really did have some urgent matter to attend to, and left Sumeru in a hurry. Hmm, maybe the Fatuli want to cover up some secret of the Balladeer. Is that why they tried to seize Hapasia? You said the Balladeer claimed that Hapasia has seen his past. So, what could be there? Have you noticed? The Balladeer is not happy with the Doctor's actions. He thinks the Doctor has no right to consider himself as his equal. So, if the Doctor was to show up again, would the Balladeer zap him with lightning? Based on what the Traveler has said, I think he would. Having the Doctor gone benefits him as well as us. In other words, we've successfully completed the stage of the plan. The Doctor is out of the picture now. Yay! That's a big accomplishment! I'm... also happy for you. Thank you for the help, Tainari. Make sure you rest up for now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that wraps things up for us here at Party's DI. Traveler, it's about time we rendezvous with the others at the Grand Bazaar. Let's continue to keep a low profile. You can head there once you're ready. All right, everyone is here. 
How did everything go? Any luck with your missions? Let's report back one by one. I'll start first. We've made the necessary modifications to the Akasha Terminal. In addition, the props required are also ready. I'll go next. The Traveler and I went to Party's DI. The situation was a bit complicated, but we found Tainari. Unfortunately, he was wounded during a fight. Who was behind it? Uh, well, that's the tough part. What should I say, Traveler? The Fatui or the Balladeer? Hmm. After some back and forth, we confirm that the doctor has left Sumeru by boat. He has something urgent to attend to back in Snezhnaya. So, we've successfully removed the doctor from the picture. Also, Tainari's already resting, so he'll be okay. Hmm. Good. Oh! Tainari also asked us to tell you this message. Trust your own senses and experiences. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I'll remember that. Everything also went smoothly on my side. The Aramites should have arrived at their destination by now. To avoid alerting the quarry, they will stay there for now. I can't believe you actually got so many Aramites into Sumeru City. It's all thanks to Ramon and his brave team, as well as their bold strategy. It appears to have been very effective. I'm glad to hear it. Well, is that everything? Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Huh? Wait, you mean that's it? Well, what else is there to discuss? Shouldn't you end with some words of encouragement? You know, to fire us up now? Personally, I'd rather we all go home and get some rest. <sighs> I'll hate them, you... Ugh. Oh, and if you wanted someone to say something to that effect, then I must reiterate that I'm here to strategize and not to lead. So you should find someone more suitable to do that. But I thought all of you Academia Big Shots were great speakers. Then I should remind you that I'm the scribe. I know that. So what? A scribe is responsible for recording meetings, not speaking. Fine, whatever. Well, Sino doesn't seem to be much of a talker either. I guess that leaves it to my employer. Employer? Yep. The Traveler hired me. <laughs> That's right. So come on, boss. What do you have to say for the team? Yeah! Say something to boost morale! Huh? What are you all doing here? Oh! It's Nilu! Hey, everyone. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Not at all. I was actually just about to go find you. <laughs> uh, judging from the group and all your serious faces, you were discussing something important, weren't you? But you also look like you're up to no good. <laughs> Seems pretty interesting. Welcome, Nilu. Would you like to join us? Huh? Join you? You mean, you also want to discuss something important with me? Yes, something very important. Nilu, are there any breaks in your performance schedule in the upcoming days? Huh? Wait, you're seriously inviting me? people of Sumeru, well, that I've ever met. <clears throat> oh, right. The Traveler and Paimon are not from Sumeru, but you are awesome as well. <laughs> That's right! I... I must admit that I'm a little scared, but I'll try my best for Lesser Lord Kusanali. If I can somehow use my abilities to help you, then count me in. Remember, believe in yourself. Okay, I'll get my friends at the Grand Bazaar to help us tomorrow. Just remember not to say too much. Be discreet. Yep, you got it. All the preparations are done. 
Now, can we finally conclude this meeting? So, have you thought up what you'd like to say, boss? Yep, yep! It's a grand plan and we're all super awesome! <laughs> well said. A good night's rest before an operation can be the difference between success and failure. <sighs> Thankfully, I've had my place to myself recently. It's been nice and quiet. Uh huh? Oh, um, nothing. All right, let's all go home and get a good night's sleep so we can be up early tomorrow. Okay, so I guess that means it's time to say good night now. Yep, good night, everyone. Good. Today is the Academia's new Garbaha Day. We can finally put our plan into action. I'll hate them should be waiting for us. Let's go to the Academia. Hello, you two. Sleep well? Uh, not really. Paimon got too nervous thinking about today and didn't fall asleep until the sun was almost up. What about you all, Haytham? Naturally, I slept just fine. After all, a good rest should be considered part of the plan, since energy is an important resource. Y you just want to show off how calm you are! It's crucial to dissipate any tension before we execute our plan. The only thing you're doing is being annoying! Anyway, do you need me to go over the game plan again? Our target is Grand Sage Azar's office. Everyone in the Academia knows that's where the Grand Sage's console is. Only they can operate it. Many restricted commands and operations are executed via that console. I'm sure that console has a way to free Lesser Lord Kusanali. You know, Paimon's been thinking, what kind of technology could let the Sages imprison even a god? That isn't something they could have accomplished with their scholarly talents alone. In the Sanctuary of Surasthana, there's a device of Greater Lord Rukadevata's that she once used to isolate herself while meditating. Five hundred years ago, the Grand Sage at the time modified the device so that it can no longer be controlled from the inside. They were effectively trapping one god with the power of another. So, uh, how are we going to get to the Grand Sage's office? Don't forget, today is Nyagarbaha Day, arguably the most important day to the Academia. The Sages and core Academia personnel are busy loading the latest batch of research developments and legal decrees into knowledge capsules so that they can be entered into the Akasha. All the Darshan's researchers have their noses to the grindstone, and the Academia's grounds are flowing with all sorts of people. It's the perfect time for an infiltration. When the Grand Sage leaves his office to supervise the entering process, that's our cue to access the console and free the Dendro Archon. Well, yes. That's just the visible side of our plan, after all. If precedence holds, the Academia should have already started preparing for Nyagarbaha Day. Everyone should be in position. All that's left is for us to lead the charge. Let's go. So are we just gonna walk in through the front door, or...? Yes. Were you expecting a stealthier approach? I... I might can't think of a good comeback. All right, it's all on all hate them if things go south. S-scribe? Please, wait! Are you Scribe Alhatham? <laughs> That's me. Is something the matter? I'm in a hurry. Uh, no. I was just surprised to see you here. I had heard that the sages were looking for you not long ago, but I didn't know what for. And, um, also, please don't bring outside guests into the academia. Outside guests? How did you arrive at such a conclusion? Your groundless inference shames the Haravatat Darshan. What? what did you say? I'm the top student in Haravatat, and I earned third place at the last Inter-Darshan debate. 
Don't look down on me! That wasn't my intention. As your Haravatat senior, I just assumed that you possessed a greater aptitude for critical thinking. Look, based on what you already know, the purpose of my return and the reason they're here should be obvious. I is that so? <clears throat> Wait a moment. Let me think. Don't tell me the answer. The sages search for you, a blonde-haired traveler, outside guests. So, from the start, the sages weren't looking for you, but this traveler? And you were gone from the academia for so long because... Hey, shh. Yes, you've proven yourself as the top student in Haravatat. I surmise you've arrived at the correct conclusion. As I expected. Uh, please, forgive me. I wasn't thinking clearly just now. Thank you for getting me back on track. It's nothing. We'll be on our way then. All right. Thank you for your contributions to the academia, scribe. now what did he just guess i'm afraid i don't know either you have no idea mm-hmm he convinced himself of whatever truth he came up with that is the so-called pride of a scholar if someone questions their academic facility they will instantly feign understanding to keep up appearances nowadays the academia is rampant with this type of scholar their obvious farces of intellect only serve to highlight themselves as fools. Wow. So there are special ways to deal with smart people. We don't even need to make up our own excuses. We shouldn't waste any more time. It would be problematic if we missed our window of opportunity. Let's go. Is this the Academia's library? Indeed. Known as the House of Dana, it is quite possibly the most extensive special collections library in Tevat. Uh, there are a lot of students going through here. Is it really okay just to waltz right in? The Academia marches to a fast beat, especially since it's Nyagarbaha Day. They're all occupied with their own matters. Just act natural. Now, hurry along. It's a lift that Academia personnel use to access higher floors. Are we gonna take it then? The Grand Sage's office is up there somewhere. No, not right now. We can't guarantee that we won't run into the Great Sage. Let's step back and observe for now. You think the Grand Sage will exit from there? And after he does, we'd sneak past him? Oh, Paimon thinks that's really dangerous. Who knows? However, if we can confirm Azar's current location, our operation will be much safer if we... Allow me to offer you a hint. If you wish to know his location, look behind you. Do not tell me you believed the Academia would not grow suspicious of you after such a prolonged absence, Scribe. An eyewitness had informed me of your whereabouts, so I came to personally welcome you. Great Sage, I didn't expect you to care so much about me. I'm truly flattered. I'm sure, but compared to you, I am far more interested in these two unexpected guests. You are... The Traveler and Paimon, correct? It's a pity that only now have I been afforded the opportunity to formally meet two of Sumeru's most esteemed guests. I do apologize for my lack of decorum. Excellent. You immediately initiated discussion instead of attempting to prepare some perfunctory excuse. 
You clearly understand the situation at hand, and have no intention of making a reckless stand. The foot traffic here renders this place unsuitable for discussion. Please, follow me to my office. This place is crawling with guards. There's no way out for us. All right then, Traveler. What did you wish to discuss with me? Today is Niagarbaha Day, so I still have many responsibilities to attend to. There is little time for idle chit-chat before I detain you all. Hmm. You seem to know quite a bit about our endeavors. If that is so, then you should be praising our great work, rather than using your trivial misgivings in a futile attempt to sway me. Trivial? Then tell me, what do the Fatui want from me? <laughs> worthless. Those are all completely worthless. Benefits, divine power. These materialistic words do nothing but debase our great work. Creating a god. Yes, we are using human wisdom to create a god. If humanity cannot attain omniscience and omnipotence, then we shall create a god to reveal them. This is the pinnacle of human wisdom. We shall regain a god's guidance at long last. No longer will we flounder in the interminable void of consciousness and knowledge. Even Ermin's soul will be freed from its plight. For our nation of scholars, this is the ultimate aspiration. No cost is too great to realize it. You will never understand the rapture of having a god be born within your very hands. With your degree of knowledge, you cannot even comprehend such an emotion. Gods exist on a plane that far eclipses humanities. Lesser Lord Kusanali, what can she even do? Care for the people? Fend off sandstorms, fabricate silly fairy tales. <laughs> These are but child's play for the academia. Does that make us equal to the gods? We are a people favored by greater Lord Rukadevata. Though I may have personally not seen it, our forefathers bore witness to true wisdom. The ascension of the Lesser Lord has brought nothing but bewilderment to the scholars. They all ask, is that truly what true wisdom is supposed to look like? With that in mind, it is better to keep her isolated in the sanctuary of Suristhana, so our academy will not become embroiled in turmoil. What a pathetic justification! Do you really think that only the super smart or powerful should be able to call themselves gods? As per your judgment, Grand Sage, they are indeed dangerous individuals. Not only are they acting against the academia, but their ideologies have the potential to lead scholars astray. Looks like there really was merit in my assignment. Alhatham? Are you talking about us? Anyway, I've brought them to the academia as ordered, but it took some time and trouble. Oh, that reminds me. Here is the investigation report you had requested. It's a summary of my time spent with the Traveler, an array of information about him ready for your perusal. I'll hate them! So you're... you're still on the Academia's side! We finally started to trust you! Excellent. Detailed contents with no errors. I would expect nothing less than an immaculate report from the scribe. As it is near Garbaha Day, I'll enter the information on you into the Akasha. Surely you know what that means. We'll be monitored, just like Sino. With the Akasha's calculation prowess, all of your actions will be predicted with an accuracy of at least 98%. Furthermore, your data will be updated in real time whenever new information presents itself. 
To put it into words, you can understand. Wherever you go, you will be walking under an invisible leash. This is Sumeru's greatest penalty for dishonest persons. Are you not familiar with the concept that great responsibility begets an equally great suspicion? In any case, you are Sumeru's most concerning external variable. Locking you down will greatly decrease the chance of any undesirable outcomes coming to pass. You're despicable! Despicable? Hmm. Perhaps from your perspective, but I suppose you had mentally prepared yourselves for this, no? Your ploy was to sacrifice the Traveler here, was it not? Uh... Lord Azar, I know what you're trying to say, but I've been following your plan this entire time. Why are you doubting me at this juncture? <laughs> Must I delineate your entire plan? Very well, I will spell things out. First off, I received an eyewitness report that you were spotted with the Traveler at Caravan Rebot. However, you immediately departed for the desert and escaped surveillance range. Judging by the time, you all likely encountered the truant General Mahamatra in the desert. Am I correct? Uh, maybe Paimon shouldn't have mentioned Sino just now. The Academia had not received correspondence from its scribe for a prolonged time. You were also in the company of the Traveler, a close associate of Lesser Lord Kusanali and General Mahamatra Sino, who had defected from the Academia. With their instigation, what was the probability that you would betray the Academia? Rationally speaking, 50%? 70%? What do you think? Regardless, that's only a guess. The facts are that I've brought the Traveler right before you, and I gave you my report. Indeed, your boldness deserves praise. To think that despite status as an outlander, the Traveler is still willing to sacrifice for the sake of your plan. If I'm correct, you have a contingency plan to save Lesser Lord Kusanali and ruin our great work. Sneak into the Academia on Nia Garbaha Day, using Alhatham's status as the scribe. For there is a good chance that an opportunity to save the Lesser Lord will arise. Should your intentions be discovered, Alhatham will turn traitor and sacrifice the Traveler, thus proving his innocence. He can then stay inside the Academia and continue searching for a way to proceed forward. As for Sino... According to the Akasha's calculations, he will soon return to the Academia and confront me in person. I suppose this is also a part of your plan? <laughs> You'll see me as a traitor regardless of what I say, no? Even if you impugn me, it would have little effect on you all. You misunderstand. Losing our scribe would irreparably damage the Academia's regular operations and the development of Sumeru's future academic systems. However, under the current circumstances, even that is trivial compared to what we stand to gain from our great work. You said that I betrayed the Academia, but you, Azar, you've betrayed all of Sumeru, betrayed its Archon. <laughs> So flight is turned to fight at long last. Guards! scholar will yearn for the power of a god in a moment of desperation. Aren't you doing the exact same thing as me, Althatham? Unfortunately for you, no god will lend you their power. Azar! He is gone. 
gone completely insane. Take him to the Matra, and exile him to Aru village. Then, find someone to take these two to the confinement room. I'll deal with them later. Grand Sage, we've finished all required preparations for Nyagarbaha Day. We may begin to enter the capsules now. Excellent. You may begin. From that, we still have yet another goal in the first stage of our operation, which is to send the Traveler to the confinement room. What? Why do we want to get him locked up on purpose? He's always been the person the Sages are most afraid of, as well as the greatest obstacle to their successful implementation of their plan. They are very aware of the risk he poses to them. Once the Traveler is imprisoned, the Sages will likely think that everything is under control. And with their guard down, the next phase of our plan will have a much higher chance of success. <laughs> I can already see the pompous looks on their faces. Oh, that's a super tricky plan, but Paimon still thinks it's not really worth it. That isn't the only reason, of course. He has a more important task once he's in confinement. According to the Academia scholars in Raman's custody, Lesser Lord Kusanali has sealed off her consciousness in the Akasha ever since she was captured by the Doctor. That way, they can't pry any more information from her. Even if we break into the Sanctuary of Suristhana, it will take time to awaken Lesser Lord Kusanali's consciousness. We need to do that in advance. So our job is to wake up Nahida! Okay, totally worth getting thrown in jail for! The confinement room is inside the Academia, close to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. It's a completely enclosed space, and you won't be receiving any visitors. I'll work with Raman scholars to make some modifications to your Akasha terminal. Once you're in, get as close as you can to Lesser Lord Kusanali and try to connect to her consciousness. However, as for whether she'll actually wake up, that will depend on our luck. today. It's the one that I'll hate them modified. Paimon thought they'd take our Akasha terminals when they'd locked us up in here. Hmm, were they being careless? All right, so what now? Sounds easy enough. We can finally talk with Nahida after all this time. Let's do it. There's a light flashing on your Akasha terminal. It's almost like... <gasps> the faster it blinks, the better the signal!
Nahira! Hey, Nahira! When did it first start? Oh, right. It started from the moment I was born. I want to become a worthy Archon. So I've kept studying. Kept listening to my people and their hearts. Kept looking for a way to save Ermin's soul. So I can catch up. Catch up to Greater Lord Rukutavata. But I'm stuck in the sanctuary of Sarastana. The sages are creating a god to replace me. And I'm forced to lock my consciousness in this boundless darkness. Nikita! Nikita! It's... so quiet here. Now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever actually listened to my own inner voice. Do our cons have them? Should Archons have them? Have I been doing the right thing? Am I really not needed? How do I really feel about all of this? It's so quiet here. Since you're the god of wisdom, You've known the answers to all these questions since the very beginning, haven't you? Who... are you? Whose voice is that? It sounds familiar. You're right, though. I won't... I won't ignore my own voice anymore. Nahira! Nahira? Did you... wake me up? <sighs> Thank you. Why are you here? We're here to rescue you. Are you alright? I'm fine. It's just... When I think of everything that's happened to me, I feel really angry now. <laughs> you should have been angry ages ago.
Nilu, are you sure about this? You're taking such a great risk for them. I'm sure to pass up any opportunity to dance, and this one is especially important. <sighs> All right. You seem to have a lot of trust in them, so I won't say more on the subject. But if anything happens, the few of us here may not be able to help you. Don't worry. They've been through worse. Everything's going to be fine. All right. You know, if you really do get arrested, we'll do everything we can to get you back. Be careful, even if it's only for our sakes. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Zubair. You're so very kind. <laughs>